Well, hello. I'm glad you could join us for the seventh episode of The Salem Painter. Today, I haven't decided what I'm going to paint yet, but I, I think I'm going to do a mountain with a trail coming down. Some nice trees. You know, the, when I was younger, I was I was friends with a, a whole family of people actually. I was friends with all their kids, friends with their mother, and and I go over to their house often. And and sometimes she would paint. I've seen her paint some awesome things. I I remember one time I I was watching as she was painting an underwater scene with a, a dolphin in it. That was very nice. I used to love going over to their house all the time, and uh, she was like a second mother to me. Uh, sometimes, just during my teenage years, I didn't have the best home life, so sometimes I'd go over there, and uh, it didn't matter what time I showed up. If, like, if I came and knocked on her door at midnight, she, she'd uh, answer the door, and she'd look at me really mean, and then she'd say, come in. So... <laughs> I used to hang out there all the time, and and her kids were some of my best friends growing up. She actually said on her Facebook show that I should paint some some of the Rocky Mountains, so I went and I looked at some pictures of them, and I think maybe I'll try to do some of that today. The only mountains I've ever actually seen in, pers in person are the ones here in Oregon. And I drove through Arizona, but it was nighttime, so I only got to see a few of them as the sun was going down. All right, now that I've got my canvas coated with liquid white, which is what I've been doing here, I'm going to go into a little bit of thalo blue. Thalo blue is... It's, it's not as strong as the Prussian blue. It's a little bit lighter color, and it's more transparent. And I'm just going to start at the top. It looks very strong right now, but it will get lighter as we blend it in and as we go down with it. And it's going to pick up that liquid light underneath. All the pictures of the Rocky Mountains I looked at, the sky was always really, really blue. It was just very clear, and it was always beautiful. And as we've said many times before, when you're painting, you always want things to get lighter as you go towards the horizon. With the liquid white, this happens automatically. I start at the top of the canvas and come down. If, if you're concerned that uh, you're not using enough paint, you know, don't worry about that. It, it, it's hard to, to lighten the sky. But it's very easy to go back and add some more. If you want it darker, you just go back to the top again and start with more blue and just blend it down. All right, and I'm just going to kind of rub the rest of the blue down here. I think we might have a lake in here. But I haven't decided for sure yet. We'll, we'll see how it goes. Either way, this most of this is going to be covered up. And if we are going to have a leg, usually I want to leave a place in the painting where the light will shine down it. So right here, I'm just going to leave a place right there in the middle that's, that's white.
You know, I was actually talking to my ex-girlfriend the other day, and uh, she was saying that her boyfriend watches the show behind her back, so uh, I'm going to give a shout-out to Tyler. How's it going? <laughs> All right. Uh, now that we got that done, I'm going to get a clean, dry brush. This one's still a little bit wet from the last painting I did, so I'm going to get a napkin and make sure I get it all out. I always find that out when I beat my hand on the brush and end up covered with paint thinner and paint. But that's okay. All right, now we're just going to go across this and just blend it out. And that, that light area that we put in... It'll stay there. You'll still be able to see it a little bit after it's blended. And I'm just going to come by and blend out some of the brush strokes in the sky, same as I did with the water. Just very lightly come across. You don't have to do this very heavy. In fact, if you do, you'll just end up leaving more brush strokes. You can blend this together as much or as little as you like. It's and the more you blend the color, the more it's going to pick up the, the liquid white underneath and it's going to get lighter. All right, there we go. Now, it seemed like a lot of the Rocky Mountains, they, they, uh, they look like just what they're called. They look like they've got more chunks of rocks in them and things like that. So I think with, with these, we're going to mix together a little, little brown, a little, little bit of the Prussian blue, a little crimson. Even a little bit of sap green in there, just mix it all together. All right, and I'm gonna just start up here. Inside, maybe. All right, right here, and I'm gonna make some mountains that that are a little bit different than we normally make. I'm gonna make some mountains that have a shape like the Rocky Mountains. Now, you're used to seeing me do like the big snow-covered peaks. The Rocky Mountains do have snow on them, but there's a, a, a lot more brown showing through. Hmm. See, I got too much there. A little more brown. And the most important thing when we're doing these mountains is that the outside edge is very well defined, like along here, because the inside's not really going to matter that much. We're going to end up blending most of it out. And I think I'm gonna, gonna get another mountain going down through here. That looks similar. You want to try to scrape off a lot of the paint that's in the center of this mountain, because 
it's not going to be important. We're going to scrape it off and it's going to get blended out with the brush. We just want to make sure that our outside edge is well defined. If it's not, we can come back over it. And like I said before, these aren't jagged. These are a little more rounded. From the pictures I saw, I've never actually been there. You know, and when I decided I was going to paint these Rocky Mountains, um, I went and looked at a lot of pictures on the internet. I wasn't sure which show I was going to do them in until I actually started putting paint on the canvas, and that's when I decided I was going to do this today. But I spent several hours on the internet just just looking at pictures of the Rocky Mountains and some really nice things there I'd like to visit one day and that scraping I'm just I'm just scraping this off of the canvas all this extra color and wipe it off All right, next I'm going to clean off some of these brushes I've used. While I was blending the sky, I, I just went ahead and left the brushes dirty. So I was sure I was done with them. So I'm, I'm rubbing this brush across uh, a wire screen in the coffee can. And um, after I get done with that, I shake it off in the trash can. And then I beat it on a beater bar, which is a broom handle I put through a trash can. You can get a rack that sits in the bottom of a wastebasket, which will do the same thing. I didn't know that when I made this, and now that I made it, I like using it. All right, the next thing we're going to do is just blend out the edge of this mountain. We're going to pull down the, the direction we think the mountain would go. And I'm, go I'm going to go ahead and do this one first because the other mountain I'm doing over here, I plan to make it go over this mountain. So you always want to paint what's in the background first. And see, look at that. Just, just like that, I pushed a mountain into the background. Move mountains around, but just strokes your brush. And uh, I'm going to come back with my palette knife and get a little more of that mountain color I've been using and, and make a little edge here because I didn't feel like this edge is really defined. And it's very important that your edge is. All right. Just pull that color down the mountain. All right. I clean off my palette knife. Now, the next thing about the the Rocky Mountains, they were a little different. In that the the rocks show show through a lot more than the the snow. So I'm going to take a little bit of white, and mix it with the Van Dyke brown I've got going on. Maybe a little, maybe a little yellow ochre in there. This is going to be very marbled, so I don't see it much. But uh, that yellow is going to show through as we're highlighting, making it look like rocks and things underneath. So now that I've got that done, I'm just going to cut off a little thin cut of it. I actually got too much here on the palette knife, so I'm going to wipe some off. Okay, I'm going to cut a little thin cut of it off. I'm going to come along this edge and just drag it, just like I did on the snow. And see, as it comes down this mountain, this paint is breaking up. 
So it's gonna look like rocks and things like that. And you know, when, when we start on the mountain and we put our highlights on, that's when we decide which direction our light source is coming from in the painting. Since the light is coming from this side, we have to make sure that when we do the rest of our painting, like putting highlights on the trees, reflections, things like that, we remember which direction the light's coming from. And now that I've got that on there, maybe I want to take a little bit of the white that I would normally put on the mountain, just to put some of it across, because you know the peaks still have snow on them. Maybe a little bit up here. It drags down a little further on this one. Alright, and the next thing we're going to do is make a shadow color. I normally like to keep the shadow color similar to the highlight color, but a little bit darker. So I'm going to take that same color, I'm going to mix some blue in it, a little brown, a little more of the yellow. Of course, I don't want to get too much yellow, it might start looking green. I'm just going to start putting some highlights on, just the same way I did on the other side, just drag them down. tripping over my mic cable here. Put that back on. All right. And every little projection you have coming out needs to have its own shadow. So, put in more shadows going this direction. You usually want to pull your shadow in the opposite direction. You know, when I went to Japan a few months ago, I was hoping I'd be able to see some of the mountains there, like Mount Fuji and things like that, but unfortunately, we never really got close enough to see them, and when when we did, it was nighttime, so I didn't get a chance to see those. So next time I go back, I'm going to make sure I get to do that. I'm going to go ahead and clean off one of these brushes. I still haven't got them all clean from the last time I used them. Just make sure it's dry. And I'm going to come along this mountain, and I'm just going to tap along the bottom. I'm going to make some mist out here. And if you, you can hear that this is hitting the canvas pretty hard. When I'm tapping here, usually I do 
very light taps when I'm painting. But right now, I'm trying to almost destroy the mountain I've made because I want to make this mist. Clean this brush off again. And wash it off because you want a clean, dry brush. And you'll want to come up the mountain just very lightly, following the angles of the mountain. I'm just going to blend out this bottom. And after you get done there, it's going to look like maybe some mist coming down between these mountains here. Now there's something else uh, I'd like to add to this up in the sky. Sometimes you'll see hints of other colors in the sky. So I'm just going to put a little bit of crimson around here. And this, and this looks terrible right now. looks crazy. I'm sure you're asking, why would he do that? Well, as I said before, if you don't like something, you can blend it out. So I'm just going to start blending these across. And it's going to make little purple streaks in the sky. And as I blend these, it's going to add a little color in there. It's going to vary the blue a little bit. And see, as, as you can see, we've got looks like a little haze now over here around the top. And I just feel like that would make the sky more interesting. It's very simple to do. Just add a little touch of color. Add a whole lot more interest to your painting. out here looks like I got some some color down on my canvas somehow from, from when I was painting sometime actually it might have came out of my little bucket here where I wash off the paint okay the next thing I think I'm gonna do is just come along and get some some sap green Maybe mix with a little brown. And I just want to start following down these mountains, like maybe off in the distance. There's just some little rows of trees and things like that coming down. These aren't going to be very big or anything. We're just going to lift up lightly with the fan brush because they're way off in the distance. You know, you're not going to see that much detail out there, so it's really not that important. Do, to do these, we're just going to bend up, follow the way the mountain goes, follow the lay of the land. Maybe out here we got some coming down to just the little trees way off in the distance. side the one I'm going in the other direction so rows of trees
walking this mountain in the background. It's even further away. So it'll be even lighter back there. Barely see them. And the next thing we're going to do, we're going to make a kind of dark color. We're mixing together quite a bit of the Van Dyke brown and the green. And we're just going to come across and start making some darker areas. Actually, I think I want to do this with the one inch brush. That's going to make things a lot easier for me. Make things go faster. All right, we're just going to come across with the brush and we're going to bend it up. Make some little hills going through here. And they're going to cover up a lot of these little trees we just did. And this is it's not going to be very dark. It's going to be a little bit darker than the background. But things that are off in the distance are usually lighter than things close to us. So that's OK. Some of my favorite things to paint are mountains. I could just paint mountains all day, I would, but you never just go out and see a bunch of mountains. You usually see trees and things like that, so add that stuff in. And after I'm done with, with that, I'm going to come along the base of these trees and just, just tap. That's going to create more mist. So you'll have a mist between this layer and your next layer. As you come forward in the painting, you want things to get a little bit darker. And you start seeing more colors instead of just shapes. So maybe, maybe we'll darken this up some. A little more of the green and brown. Maybe even add a little blue in. a great way to make things look darker. And what I'm doing here, I'm just bending the brush up. I can make some interesting treetop shapes. Usually when I get to this point in the painting, I like to step back and, and just see what I've got so far. Sometimes when you're up close, it can be very hard to tell how your colors are going together. It can be very hard to tell if everything's blending right. And uh, honestly, when you're up close, it, it will look like a huge mess. It doesn't, it doesn't look like it does from a distance or like it does on TV. If you're right up next to these, it looks like something a four-year-old painted. But when you back up, that's when you see the magic. It kind of reminds me of like uh, the pointillism paintings, where if you're up close, it just looks like a bunch of dots. But then if you're far back, it makes a nice picture. And the one thing we can do to make it look better when uh, when we're a little bit closer is to put more detail into it. We don't usually have time for, for that on our show, but at, time you, at, at home you'll have more time. So you can go through and just put little sticks and twigs and things like that in. You can spend hours doing that if, if that's what makes you happy. All right, 
we're getting a little bit closer in the painting, so it's time to start thinking about some trees and things like that. So I think I'm going to take my fan brush and go into some dark colors, some black, blue, a little bit of green, mix them all together. And, and I'm going to make a couple of trees here. I'm, my evergreen tree right here. I like I like making those. They, they always make your painting look nice. But as we come forward, I think I'm going to paint a big tree uh, up towards the front. It might even cover all this up. I don't know. We'll see how it goes. And another one right beside it. Yeah, maybe even a third one here. Maybe he's leaned over a little to the side. These trees are still far away, very far off in the distance, so there's not going to be much detail. Just want some trees there. We're not even really painting a tree. We're just painting an indication of a tree so people know it's there. It's not even important. Maybe we'll have another tree right here, just right over the top of the mountain. Same way, just corner of your fan brush, in and out. And these trees don't all have to be shaped perfect like Christmas trees. See, I've got some, some leaves missing here in the side of this one. Looks like maybe a branch is missing. Maybe it is. Maybe it got torn off when the tree was little. Maybe the tree got stepped on by a deer or something. All trees don't grow up to be telephone poles. Not all of them are perfectly straight. And then put a bigger one right here in the center, coming over both of our mountains. Another tree here. Maybe, maybe we got a, a bigger tree that's not an evergreen. Maybe we're gonna paint a, something like an oak tree or something like that. This is so far away. You wouldn't see much detail in this either, so it's not very important. We paint a lot of detail into it. We just want to get some leaves showing through. Just think about a basic tree shape and make maybe uh, take a little bit of cat yellow and this dark color we got going and just put some highlights on it. Now that's that's not very bright, so I think I'm gonna get another brush here. Get just yellow on the brush. Come back and just highlight some areas of this tree. You don't wanna cover it all up because through your through your uh, dark background color you can see some of the mountain and through your highlight color you want to see some of the dark background color that's very important usually when they're higher up the sun's going to shine more on them so maybe towards the top be a little bit brighter than they are at the bottom and I'm not going to go through and paint a lot of detail in because it's still far away. Maybe I'll get a little bit of yellow ochre to put on it. Some of the leaves are changing. Maybe it's maybe it's starting to get fall out here. End of summer and leaves are starting to change colors. Alright. I'm gonna put that brush to the side and I'm gonna use it to do my other highlights. Now that we're getting closer, you're going to start seeing a little more color in these foreground bushes. And 
and maybe if I'm going to have a lake here, maybe I want it to to come up further here so it looks like, you know, a little bit rounded like a lake might look. See the bank comes around and just standing on the other side of the lake looking out across it. And once you get closer, you're going to start getting more color in your painting. So I'm going to come back and get that uh, that lighter color that I have. And I'm going to start putting some bushes closer. And all these are individual bushes, so we paint them all separate. And come back with different colors. And as you go down from the top, they start picking up darker paint, and that's okay because the bottom of the bush is always going to be darker than the top. You got to think about what are the lights going to be hitting it. Put a little yellow ochre on there, just change up the colors because not every bush is the same. And now, after I do that, maybe you can get a little bit of this bright red here. That'll make a nice bush. It's right there. Yeah. Uh, I'm gonna stand out more than the others. The brighter colors. All right. Now that I've got this done, I have to decide where my leg's gonna be, and I just wanna. I'll start pulling down, getting a little bit of that color down into the water. Side where the water meets the land, just pull down from there. Maybe, uh, maybe here I'm gonna pull down a little further because I got those trees there. Maybe they show up a little bit in the water. Let's see, maybe, maybe over here too. Maybe some of these show up more. Just tap out a basic shape, and it kind of looks like what's above it. These are a little bit further back from the lake, so maybe you'll see the tip of them reflecting. And uh. Tap some of that off on a napkin so I don't have too much paint. And again, just just come try to pull straight down. After you do that, take a clean dry brush. See, that one is definitely not clean. I think I'll clean this one off. I usually end these episodes with blue hands because I always get blue paint on myself. Towel. Make sure all the paint is out of your bristles. All right, we're gonna just lightly, very lightly, come across this. Just, just a few hairs of the brush over it. And I'm not too worried about it yet, cause I'm still gonna come back and put some more color in here. All right, next, I'm gonna continue working on my reflections. And anywhere I have color, I'm, I'm gonna come through and. Just put some into the reflections. Try to use a color similar to what I used before. Just come across. And this doesn't have to be exact. When you're looking at a reflection, water waves around quite a bit, so we're not worried about making a picture perfect painting here. We just want to paint a picture that makes us happy. And once again, after we've done that, just come pull down lightly on those colors you just put in the water. Not hard, we don't want to destroy them. And then just very lightly come across. Just a couple of hairs of the brush. 
and that's those reflections are going to look very nice when the painting is finished. And this is pretty far away, so we're not going to worry too much about a bank here. I'm going to take a little bit of the liquid white and put it on our palette. And we just want to stretch it out then. All we're doing here is making some water lines. And we're just going to, sometimes I'll dull it down with different colors, but today we're just going to leave it like it is because it's a bright day outside in the painting. So we want it to show up bright. And this water line, not only is it going to look like water hitting the shore, it's also going to divide your bushes and things like that from the lake at reflections. Since they're close to the same color. And you know, if, uh, if it's too bright, you can go back over it with your clean palette knife and just rub it in until it's almost not there. But what we're hoping is that when this is done, it'll look like the bank of a lake. All right. That looks nice and all, but we still got half a canvas left, so we need to decide what we're going to do next. I think we're going to take some dark colors and maybe we got a little land projection just coming out right here. Just uh, paint in some dark area. Maybe a little bit more. Come out a little bit further. Now something I like to do, you may have noticed that I, I keep a, a few old torn up brushes around here. And the reason I do that is because I like the texture that the little frayed ends give me. So if, if I go back through some of that same dark color and I come back along here, it's going to make things that look like bushes hanging out. And that, that looks really nice in your painting. So th think about keeping a cheap brush or two around for that because when they get worn down, it can be really great tools for making this. You can even use a sponge to paint with. If, if, if it makes the shape you're looking for, then it's good to use. You don't have to tell anybody what you use to paint it with. You can do some of these things and, and you sh you'll show people and your friends won't believe that you did it. I know, nobody believed I did them for a while. All right, what I'm doing here, if we can go down to my palette for a second, I'm mixing up a lot of paint, a lot of dark colors, mixing it up very thick, and I'm, and I'm coming across it just like this, back and forth, back and forth, and when we get done here, it's going to leave a little chiseled edge that... Uh, that we can use to, to paint with. All right, now we're going to go back up to the canvas. And, you know, usually I paint these big trees with with a fan brush, but you can even use a two-inch brush. And maybe right here we want a big tree that starts right here. Yeah, he lives right there. He does now because we put him in there. And y you can also make these evergreen trees using your two-inch brush. You don't have to use the fan brush. Just get more paint when you need it. Just keep coming down back and forth using the edge of the brush and as as you get further down it's going to cover up more and more. It's, it's covering up some of these nice trees we had already made but that's okay. If we learn to make trees then it's it's not a bad thing that they got covered up. Going to a little bit more of the blue. 
bit more of the black. It's getting too light as we're coming down, but and we want it to get darker. All right. Um, we're gonna come back with the. Uh, some of that yellow color that we used for our reflections and the highlights on those bushes. We're going to highlight the edge of this tree. We've got a little orange in there, which is strange for an evergreen, but I think it looks nice. So I'm going to keep using that. Just be careful not to cover up all of your dark areas as you come down. You want that dark area to show through. And now that we're done highlighting the tree, we can come back and start putting some bushes over it. And we've got a nice dark color down here already for the bushes. You don't have to do this very fast. Uh, I'm kind of running out of time, so I'm going to hurry up and try to get some of it done. So if I don't talk as much, that's why. And I've never been to the Rocky Mountains, but uh, I think maybe they do look a little bit like this from the pictures I saw. And you can see I'm using a brush that's a little frayed here too. It makes all those nice little things that hang off the sides. All right. Next, I'm going to go into some of that same dark color on the ground. Uh, pull some of that down. You know, a lot of times I, I use brown to make my bank with, but uh, you can use other colors. It doesn't matter what you want to use. It's, it's up to you. If you think the color looks good, then you use it. When I first started doing the show, I'd often go over the colors before we started so I could let you know which ones I'm using. But I don't do that anymore because I feel like people should try out different colors, see what works best for them. If, if you do want to know what I'm using, some of our previous episodes show it, and we have those up on YouTube so you can go back and look at those. All right, and I'm going to go back over, mix up a little bit of highlight color. Yeah, I got some sun shining on the rocks or something along here. All right, I'm going to go back into my bush color, and I, I want to I wanna break up this, this straight line I've got a little bit. Maybe, maybe some of the bushes come out below that. And same as before, I'm going to go down and pull some of that into the water to make reflections. And I'm just going to go straight across with it, just very lightly. A little bit more right here. All right. I'm going to go back into my reflection color and just put some more down here wherever I think they would go. After we're done with that, we'll just lightly pull down again. And then 
few hairs come across it. Now you'll notice right here, below my reflection, I just rubbed some paint into my water. Anytime you make a mistake with oil paints, it's very easy to fix it by blending it into the, the background. So maybe I'll just make that part of my water here. You have to rub it kind of hard to get it to start blending. Alright, now we're going to do something really crazy here. We have about six minutes left. Maybe I want another projection that comes down through here. What I'm doing now is just putting in a dark background color. It doesn't matter what color this is because most of this will be covered by bushes. And every time you make a, a, a new projection like this, it adds depth to your painting. And, and that's always good. When, when there's, there's depth, depth in your painting, it really draws your eye into the center of the painting. And, and that's going to help out a lot. That's, that's going to make people think, oh, wow, I really like that. Okay, now that we got this done, I go back with my brush I used to make that last tree, and I want another tree. Maybe it starts right here. Maybe this tree is a different kind of tree, has hanging branches coming out. If we get that done, we can go back and take our big two inch brushes. And we can put some highlights on the tree. Just come down however we think the highlights would be on this tree. How do you think light would shine on this tree? Maybe we'll mix in some of our yellow color. Just come down the side. Start doing our bushes. A lot of yellow ochre up here. back to my one inch brush and start putting in little individual bushes. Maybe a little more dark color in here. I don't want to cover all that up. And I'm running low on my yellow so I'm going to get a little bit more out. Finish the painting up with. That's just cad yellow. It's my favorite color for making highlights with. It mixes with the green to make a very bright color. And if you're having trouble getting the paint to stick like I am, just put a little, little bit of paint thinner in it. Very small amount. And as you can see, it's, it's, it's letting the paint stick now.
And if you ever run into a situation where your paint gets too thin and you just feel like you're mixing mud up, the best thing to do is just let it dry. Just let the paint dry and then come back and paint in other details later. You won't be able to use the effects of the magic white that way, but you will be able to get your paint finished and it will look the way you want it to. All right, one last detail I'm going to add. I'm going to come through where I put some of this uh, dark color, the paint thinner. I'm going to thin it out a lot until it's almost like water. I'm going to twirl my brush around in there, and maybe I'm going to have little tree branches here. While you're, while you're doing this, you want to twirl your brush as you go down. And it's an excellent way to make tree branches. And, you know, you can spend a lot of time putting these in at home, but I'm just going to make a few of them here. And after you're done with the tree branches, you can come back through with highlight color and just put some leaves around them. Because you... When you see the tree branches, you don't always see the whole thing. You just see part of it at times. All right, and we're going to step back and take a look at what we've got. And I think we're going to call that a finished painting. I'm glad you could join us for this episode, and I hope you'll be back next time. Thanks.